Welcome to another edition of Prior Power Principles. We are at episode 11, and our topic today is Reasons to Pray, and we're at chapter 10. And if you want to follow us, you can get the book. I now have my copy. Yeah, Prior. I got it from the our Adventist bookstore in Charlotte, but Elder David got his from Amazon. So you have different ways of getting this book. You can also download it from your phone, EGW Writings, the book prior, and you can read along with us. All right, today we're going to talk more about the prior principles, but again, let us first pray before we begin. So we'll ask Elder David to do our opening prayer. All right. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you and just praise you for your goodness and your grace, for always caring for us and always paying attention to our every need. Father, we just ask that you'd forgive us for our lack of focus on, on your goodness and how we lack in praising and giving glory to your name uh, as much as we could. Father, we acknowledge all of your grace towards us. Yes. And Father, I just ask now that you'd surround us with holy angels. I'm asking that at the atmosphere of heaven, the atmosphere of light and peace would surround us. I'm asking that the angels would instruct us and that you would put your words in our mouth and our, our minds, that you would bring to our attention the things that you want to reveal. We entrust our lives, our thoughts, our feelings, our attitudes into your hands for you to glorify your name in us and through us. I ask that you would bless those who are watching. Father, I'm asking that our, their hearts would be open to, re, and to receive just what you want them to understand for today. Yes, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So as usual, we start with our testimony. So um, I'll share first, and then Elder David will share, and then we will go into our uh, sharing of our prior power principles. All right, so what would I like to share specifically? It's about diet. Um, I think I, I, I was talking to Elder David about this, but I wanted to share it in this format. Maybe it could encourage someone. So, um, so I went to a, a retreat, a camp, uh, recently and you know I've learned many things about you know starting a, a, a you know something in your home where you can help people I forgot the word sanitarium yes yeah, sanitarium in your home and I was really touched by this and then also the diet and everything and so I I decided that I'm going to implement this kind of diet change the same thing that Daniel had. If you guys have heard the story about Daniel, you would have realized that he ate this special meal for 10 days. So I got together with another friend of mine and I said, okay, I'm going to move in your community next month. And this is what I wanted to do. So I lay down a plan with up some plans with her and I, you know, I got contact of other people that have done this before this 10 day that uh, Daniel diet, uh, challenge and we kind of put together something and we're working on like a website and so on so the the thing is that we're gonna be uh, okay. focusing on diet uh, free of charge of course to like the people in that particular community and we're going to introduce them to uh, healthy living lifestyle changes but particular in diet first you know <laughs> I think many people love to eat, including myself. So it's something that you can get, you know, kids and everything. So we are deciding to get, you know, children to come out and participate in making meals. And we will just use this channel of using the kids to bring someone with them. Maybe we'll do it on a monthly basis. We're still praying and fasting about it. But we're thinking like having kids, maybe five-year-old or seven-year-old to invite their grandma to the next meeting and say, grandma, come, you have to help me to make this. And, you know, as the grandparents come, as the parents come, they're also learning the principles uh, in diet and how it affects the mind and the body. So this is my little testimony that I want to share. I'm excited about it. We're, we're st it's still in the pipeline, you know, pipeline has to say, but we believe that God you know, we'll open the avenues when we have a desire to work for him. Amen. Amen. That's exciting. <laughs> I've been praying the same thing because I recognize, especially with COVID-19, how so many people 
uh, the people that are susceptible to COVID-19 are people who are obese, people who have diabetes. These are people who have not taken care of their health. And what people don't realize is if we allow God to be in control of our appetites, be in control of our diets, and the Holy Spirit is directing, then we have health and our bodies can fight off these diseases where mm -hmm. uh, people that have been uh, uh, indulging the flesh and stuff, they, they, they succumb to these things and it's ter terrible. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just, uh, I'm excited for you. We, we've been wanting to do that. We have a big garden and we've got all these garden vegetables and stuff. And we share them with our, our neighbors. We were able to meet all of our neighbors, every neighbor in our neighborhood. We would take the wheelbarrow or bags of tomatoes and mm -hmm. cucumbers and that stuff. And we'd go around door to door and we'd meet all our neighbors. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it worked so well. I mean, they just opened their door and they'd invite us in. We'd be talking to them and it was awesome. It was just awesome. That's anyway, beautiful. that was uh, food is a way to people into people's hearts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I had something happen today as I was reading as I was reading the book. Uh, there's one quotation that said, "Oh, we do. Do we know God as we should? What comfort, what joy we should have if we were to learn daily the lessons He desires us to learn." We must know him by an experimental knowledge. It would be profitable for us to spend more time in secret prayer in becoming personally acquainted with our Heavenly Father. Well, I got some ex experimental time with the Lord today. Mm. I was filling out a form online, uh, applying, making an application uh, for, a, for an account. And I reached for my wallet because I needed my license number and my wallet wasn't there. So I'm thinking, where did my wallet go? Mm -hmm. And yesterday afternoon, I went to Walmart and that's the only time I've used my wallet. I go, Oh, that's not good. I, and, and sometimes, you know, if I, I can set my car, my wallet down and be doing something with my hands and maybe forget to bring it, pick it up. So I called Walmart and I asked them, he says, did anybody turn in a wallet? No. So I'm just praying. I said, Lord, please protect my wallet. You know, <laughs> yeah. I don't care if they took the money in it. I just want all those cards and my license because that's such a hassle, right? Oh, yes. It was only like $80 in it or something like that. But not that I would want to lose it, but that's, that's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, I began to pray and I thought, well, let's see, after I got back, I checked all my pants pockets to see if I'd left in my pants pockets. I checked around my bed, under the bed, couldn't find it anywhere. Then I remembered I had gone out to mow the late neighbor's yard um, uh, yesterday evening I, and, we, and I was mowing on a, a steep hillside. So I thought, well, maybe it slipped out of my pocket when I'm on the tractor and it's going sideways down the hill. Mm -hmm. so I went out there and looked, looked all over the neighbor's yard, couldn't find it anywhere. I came back and, and the thought just kept coming back to me. The Lord's always been good to me. He's always protected me. He's just always been there. And so I just wouldn't worry about it. I just kept putting it in his hands and, and the thought kept coming back. He's always been there. He's always been good. He's always guarded and protected me. And so that was comforting all day long, but still no wallet, right? So finally, I'm, I'm preparing, and, and I had some prayer time. And so I really decided to focus in, and this, this text came to my mind, this quotation that says, we must know him by an experimental knowledge. And that had stuck in my mind as I read that this morning. I said, mm -hmm. okay, Lord, this is an experimental prayer with you. Mm -hmm. I need to know you experimentally, you know? And so I just began to pray. And, and as I was praying, I saw myself in, the, in, in Walmart. And mm -hmm. I saw myself there at the self-checkout thing. And I remembered pulling the card out of the, out of the machine there. And I put it in my pocket, put it in my wallet, and put it back in my pocket. So I said, OK, thank you, Lord. I know it's not at Walmart now, because he made that. I could just see it, the whole process. Wow. And so then I said, well, where is it, Lord? And all of a sudden, it was like the picture came to my mind of the tractor and, and the seat of the tractor. 
I went and got the key, went outside, unlocked the shed, and looked it in the tractor seat, and there it was. Oh. <laughs> the Lord is so good. He let me see it wasn't at Walmart. Then he, yeah. then he let, reminded me to look at the, at the tractor seat. It was like I could see it right there. Went wow. out there, and it was right there where I saw it. He is just so good. And I was just praising him. He was just, he was just so good. You know, I, oh, I, I knew he was good, but sometimes it's just nice when you get a fresh reminder of his faithfulness. Yes, that, that it reminds me of the the the, the parable of the lo, the lost coin. You know, even though it was lost, covered in dirt, it still had that you know that value. Yes. So it was valuable. You know. All right, that was just a beautiful sharing, and we know you guys also have very a lot of testimonies to share. And today we want to just expound on the reasons to pray. Why? Well, why? What reason is there to pray? So, Elder David, on the top of top of your head, what reason do you have to pray? Why do you pray? Well, today it was because I had an express need and. You know, and, and all afternoon then after that, I've just been praising God. And there's another quotation here that talks about Hannah and how she was praising God. Mm -hmm. and, and one of our great needs to pray, the reason, one of the reasons why we don't see the power of God is we don't praise him near enough. Mm -hmm. If we could just get a glimpse of all the constant care that he has for us, mm -hmm. constant provision for us, even when we don't realize it we would be praising God all the time. And, and you know, it's, it's so important. Um, when you read Romans 1, it talks about this process of God revealing himself through mm -hmm. his creation and everything. And those who reject that says, because they knew God, they did not honor him as God, nor did they give thanks. Mm -hmm. He says, because of this, their hearts were darkened and they were given over to depravity. And it went these three stages of depravity, all because that we don't acknowledge God as God or give thanks. So I've been giving thanks today and I've been thanking God that he is Lord and he is in control and I'm not in control. And he's, I'm thankful that he's in control and not me. There's so well. much freedom and peace in that. Praise the Lord for that. You know, I pray sometimes because I need wisdom. I need wisdom for God to just guide me, to teach me. And so, you know, the Bible says that if we lack wisdom, we should ask of him who gives liberally to all men. And so I claim it by faith that he has given me the wisdom. All right. So let's now jump into our principles for today. It's chapter 10 and the title is Reasons to Pray. And we're going to be sharing some prayer power principles with you guys today. All right, so um, I'll start first. It says, we do not value as we should the power and efficacy of prayer. You know, I was just mentioning to Elder David, like, you know, when you buy a car, you have to follow the manual. You can't just say, oh, I know this car, I know what it needs and I don't need to read it, which may be true too, but if you are just going by presumption, that's dangerous. So we should, you know, when God tells us to pray, we have a guideline also like this manual, how we should follow it. And, you know, this first quote is saying, we do not value as we should the power and efficacy of prayer. And what is that talking about? It's saying that prayer is powerful. If you are going through an experience and you feel burdened, pray. If you have decisions to make and you, you don't know which, which road to take, you have two roads, sometimes more than two, you know, pray about it. So that is the power that God wants us to exercise um, in praying. And when you pray, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. We should also exercise faith. But those are some of the reasons why we do not see the power of prayer, because we don't understand the manual. <laughs> okay. Yes, and right across the page from that, it talks about uh, Christ is our only hope. Come to God in the name of him who gave his life for the life of the world. Rely upon the efficacy of his sacrifice. Now, there's mm -hmm. using the word efficacy again, uh, mm -hmm. not for prayer, but 
it's easy for us to see our unworthiness to come to the pre into the presence of God. And we are unworthy. We're sinful. We're helpless. We're totally dependent. Mm -hmm. And yet we must remind ourselves often that we can, we have no choice. We are sinful. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way we can come to God. And that's why Jesus died. And it's because of his righteousness. It's because of his death on the cross that we have a right to come boldly before the throne of grace. If you start focusing on yourself, you realize I have no right to be here. I'm a sinful, yes. helpless person. Mm -hmm. So the more we look to Jesus, the more we trust in him, the more he changes us into his image. Mm -hmm. And the more we, the only way we're going to feel like we can actually come into the presence of God is trusting in the righteousness of Christ. It says, show, show that his love his joy is in your soul, and that because of this, your joy is full. In God is our strength. Pray much. Prayer is the life of the soul. The prayer of faith is the weapon by which we may successfully resist every assault of the enemy. Mm -hmm. There is victory in Jesus, absolute victory in Jesus. When you are in the spirit, temptation loses its power. Right. If you're in the flesh, you will be overwhelmed and overcome every time. Mm -hmm. Because those mm -hmm. who are in the flesh cannot please God. But mm -hmm. those who walk by the Spirit, these shall not fulfill the desires of the flesh. The whole key is being abiding in Christ and walking in His Spirit. Let His Spirit be in control. There is victory in Jesus, full and complete, but not in your flesh in the spirit of Jesus, with Jesus dwelling in your heart. The victory is in Jesus, not in ourselves, unless he is in us, right? Yes, mm. that's just uh, beautiful. We, we, we cannot overcome by ourselves at all. It is, you know, we have to give the praise and the thanks to, to, to him, you know, never, never forget that is very important. Right. You know, another thing that I liked about the reason to pray is that, you know, we live in a world where we have different religion, especially here in the United States. You know, you come across Muslims, um, Hindus. Um, what are the religions are there, Elder David? Uh, Jews. Um, so many different religions we're surrounded by, Catholics right? Catholics and Protestants yeah. of all varieties. Right, exactly. <laughs> And you sense this kind of division amongst us, like, oh, I'm a Christian. I don't want to, you know, relate to my neighbor who is a Muslim, you know, this kind of division. But the one, one thing about prayer that I learned from this chapter is that it says prayer un unites us with one another and with God. It didn't say unites us with other Christians. It's not only Christian. So, you know, when I look at that, you know, the Lord just laid on my heart that, you know, it's not just about just, you know, uniting yourself with other Christians. There are people around us that could benefit from your skills, from your priors, from, you know, just sharing. As you you, you shared, Elder David, that um, you guys had a lot of um, vegetables and food that, from your garden and you shared it. Did you just pick Christians only to share with? or oh, did no, you just everybody. Exactly. So, you know, when we pray, you know, Jesus is brought near to our side and it is he that gives us the power to look in all men as equal. So we should see people through the eyes of Jesus and he does not look at Muslim or, you know, whatever religion or whatever category, you know, you want to put your whatever divisions that we've made ourselves in. So prior unites us with one another and with God. And, you know, that's just a beautiful reason to pray. We had an interesting experience when we were going around to our neighbor's houses. Uh, we went around all to every house, but there was one house that was way back in the woods and they had dogs and stuff. And so wow. the first time we went around, we uh, didn't go to that house. And But the next time we went around, it was like the Holy Spirit says, no, you need to go to that house. And so the other person started walking over to the to the other direction i go no we have to go down here and it's like the fear of the dogs you know it's like the enemy tries to keep us and use fear to keep us from doing something that god wants us to do mm -hmm. and i knew that we were supposed there was a reason why we were to go to that house mm -hmm. that was the family that we ended up doing bible studies with they were a good catholic family and but you know mm -hmm. it was so interesting um they were yeah. good Catholics, but they didn't know their Bible. In fact, we were, uh, I was 
doing a, uh, an odd job in their backyard. And, and this lady, she always bring me in. She, oh, she's the kind of person that has the gift of hospitality. You know, she has to feed you. You're, so she says, what do you, what do you mm -hmm. eat? I said, well, I eat clean foods. She says, what are those? I said, oh, you know, in the Bible, there's clean foods and unclean foods. Mm -hmm. And uh, she says, I've never heard anything about that. Would you, would you teach me about that? Mm -hmm. That's how our Bible studies begin. Wow. We started studying about the clean and unclean foods in the Old Testament, and that started our Bible studies. So God will just use all kinds of things. And a lot of times he uses our diet and, and things to open doors for uh, deeper Bible study. On mm -hmm. it's, It is the, the health message is the right arm of the gospel. Jesus mm -hmm. did more healing than he did preaching. Mm -hmm. And it often opens people's hearts to be receptive to receiving the gift of Christ, which is the greatest gift of all. Ah, that's beautiful. I was just thinking, you know, you know, you said you 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 guys were able to share, you know, the the food that you grew. And I just think that, you know, from you know, from my personal experience, you know, people who participate in agriculture or gardening of any sort, they just have an overall better what energy you're more happy <laughs> more than depressed so you know <laughs> you know people who are probably depressed and uh, complaining and so on maybe they should get into gardening it lifts your spirit because it takes your mind off yourself and you're focusing on your energy you know growing uh, seeds is just like having another baby you have to tend for it you have to care for it you have to water it you if you're leaving the home you have to think about who can i ask to take care of them and then when the when the when the fruits come when the when the harvest time comes it opened doors where you can witness as you said i was just thinking about that you you guys were able to share with others and you know i also think about people who are you know have been affected by this pandemic it would be a good thing if they had you know maybe in the cities or in the country just do some gardening that can provide for their household instead of thinking oh we're you know we don't have money to buy vegetables or food so it can be a really great opportunity for you to grow the food from the land to you know feed your family and provide for others too so you know and people notice way. too i was uh, i went to walmart yesterday and um, there was traffic coming across the road so i ran across the road and uh, quickly to get get in, you know get across before the cars came and uh, there was a young lady who said wow you're in shape <laughs> I, you know people a lot of people my age aren't really good at running and can run very well <laughs> yeah praise god yeah. yeah god is good you know uh we are so blessed when we learn to follow his principles mm -hmm. both in diet and and in in habits all of our habits need to be under his the control of his spirit mm -hmm. and what a difference it makes how much better you feel i haven't known a depressed day as long as i can remember i'm just always happy and you know the joy of the lord is our strength H having joy in the holy spirit is just a blessing that god gives to all of his children Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, there's another part in the book that I really like. It talks about just praying for just today, um, praying for grace. That is the grace to face today's trials and not to worry about, you know, tomorrow. The Bible says sufficient unto the day is its own evil. And what that is saying, you know, the spirit of prophecy expounds on it. It says grace for tomorrow you do not need. You should feel that you have only to do with today. Overcome for today. Deny self for today. Watch and pray for today. Obtain victories in God for today. You know, it reminds me of another scripture that says, today if you hear God's voice, do not harden your heart. Because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. When we go to bed at night, we do not know if we will live to see the other day. So, you know, we should just pray and ask God to keep us. You know, there's a Adventist hymn that says moment by moment. And, you know, that's how we should live each day. Just praying for this moment. Lord, give me the grace to overcome the trials that I'm facing today. Not focusing on Lord, what am I, how will I overcome tomorrow? No. So, you know, so that's what we want you guys to focus on. Just praying for grace for today. Uh, uh, there's one on the bottom of 91 here. It says, it, it reminds me of, of Hebrews, uh, I believe it's chapter 10, where it talks about 
uh, we are to come into the presence of God by a new and living way, which he inaugurated through, his, through the veil, that is his flesh. So uh, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So there's the promise of, of, of through Jesus Christ, we have bold access to the presence of God. But it says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together, especially as you see the day approaching. I don't know you, but I can see that day approaching. Uh, the signs of the times are very clear yes. for those who are paying attention. And um, this says, to the humble believing soul, the house of God on earth is the gate of heaven. Mm. Songs of praise, the prayer, the words spoken by Christ's representatives are God's appointed agencies to prepare a people for the church above for the loftier worship into which there can be nothing, enter nothing that defileth. Mm -hmm. So our time in church, our time of praising and praying and, and um, coming into God's pre presence and having fellowship with each other in the spirit, this mm -hmm. is preparing us for the beauty of heaven where there will be nothing that defiles, just mm -hmm. joy and peace and love and everything in the Holy Spirit and living in the presence of God. I don't know if you've ever experienced the presence of God, mm -hmm. but sometimes when you're praying, sometimes when you're ministering to others, it's like the presence of Jesus just comes down and it mm -hmm. is overwhelming. It's just, it is so, you, I mean, words cannot describe <laughs> it. It's this, <laughs> It says, yeah. the love of God, which passes understanding. You can't explain it. You can't, mm. you start trying to explain it. And it's like the love of God just fills you and flows through you. I remember there was one time where we were praying for uh, someone's roommate. And mm -hmm. there was about five of us there. And we began to pray and just intercede. And all of a sudden, the presence of Jesus came into that room. And, and it was like, I opened my eyes and I expected to see someone. It was, he was so real. Mm -hmm. And we were all looking at each other and we started chuckling and just laughing because we could not believe the power of the presence of Jesus right there in our midst. Mm -hmm. and I, I can't remember a time when it's been so real and so uh, demonstrative as it was at that time. We were just amazed. I wish that it would happen more often. Amen. <laughs> Another part that I would like to share is that, you know, when we pray, we should pray, you know, like the Our Father prayer says, the well-known prayer, lead us not into temptation. And, you know, we are not safe or, you know, the spirit of prophecy says no man is safe for a day or an hour, 60 minutes without praying. And, you know, the devil knows the scriptures, believe it or not. He knows them. He quoted them to, I think, to Jesus in, um, say, Matthew chapter 4, the, you know, the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. The devil quoted the scriptures. He's, he quoted Psalm, I think, Psalm 91, the, yes. the angel, you know, shall yes. give thee charge over thee to keep thee. So Satan is an expert in quoting scripture, placing his own interpretation upon passages by which he hopes to cause us to stumble. So we have to pray for God to give us wisdom. So here's another reason why we should pray. Pray and ask God to give you wisdom concerning the scriptures, what the meaning of. And I would recommend having like a Bible dictionary and reading other books that expound on a particular scripture. But don't forget to pray and ask God himself to reveal the meaning of the passage that you're reading. Yes. I love this one on uh, uh, the second Paragraph on 92, it says, every promise in the word of God furnishes us a subject matter for prayer. Find a promise and there bring it before the Lord and pray through those promises. Have you ever tried that? Praying the promises of God. It says every promise in the word of God furnishes a subject matter for prayer, presenting the pledged word of Jehovah as our assurance. Whatever spiritual blessing we need, it is our privilege to claim through Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1, one of my favorites. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Everything that we need for life and godliness right there in the presence of God 
it's in Christ Jesus and it's there to receive by faith. Mm. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, if there is nothing else that you want to share, Elder David, we could go into our season of prayer or prayer focus. Okay. If you still want to share something, I'll just go ahead and talk about our prayer focus for today. Elder David will be praying for an experimental uh, knowledge of God, and he shared that in his testimony uh, today. And I'll be praying for a spirit of prayer. You know, we want to pray, you know, effective and earnest prayers. You know, it, the Bible says the effective and fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You know, you want to pray and, you know, something happens. You don't just want a dead prayer. So I'm praying for that spirit of prayer to be on every believer, every child of God, every person, whoever you are. God's, God, it, you know, God speaks to us through his word and we speak to him through our prayers. So I pray that, you know, the devil wants to just take everything away from us, but prayer can keep us. So that's going to be our prayer focus for today. Elder David, would you like to share any other thought from uh, there? And then we'll just jump into just our... Just trying to remember where that text is. It says, I will pour out upon the house of David and the house of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. It's, a, it's one of the Old Testament small minor prophets. Mm -hmm. I will pour out on the house of David and the house of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and of supplication. So God mm -hmm. is going to pour out on us the spirit of grace and of prayer, supplication, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a gift from God. He's going to pour it out on us and stir it up in our hearts so that we don't have to try to stir up some formalism like the Pharisees did, right? <laughs> Making long prayers so that people could hear. No, mm -hmm. let God take over your prayer life. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. All right. So, uh, Elder David, uh, you can start your uh, focus prior, experimental knowledge of God for all of us, not just for our viewers, but for you and also for me. Yeah. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> yes. Father in heaven, Lord, we just come to you. Lord, we are so helpless. Without your Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. You said it's not by might or by our power, but by your Spirit, says the Lord. As a Father, you said uh, we know not how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit will make intercession for us. We're asking, Lord, that you would take over our prayer life. We're asking that you would, that we would not be satisfied. Father, the first thing we must acknowledge is that we're not content. We're not happy with our prayer life. And Lord, I'm not content with mine. I want more. I want more of you. I want to enter in in a deeper way. Father, so I'm, I'm just asking that that experimental prayer life, that experimental connection with you would be stirred up, not only in me and Gabrielle, but for all of those of us who are, who are lift, listening today. Father, I'm asking that you would stir us up. I'm asking that the Holy Spirit would take possession of us. Lord, I just want to thank you. You woke me up this morning and you, you stirred me up to prayer. Father, I'm asking that you would do that every day. I'm asking that you would do that with each one of us. Father, I'm asking that our eyes would be lifted up to you to wait to see what you will do, that you would pour out upon us that spirit of grace and of supplication, that we would see him whom we have pierced and would mourn for him as one mourns for an only son. Father, I'm asking that you said, ask ye the Lord in the time of the latter rain, and the Lord will make bright clouds and give to every man grass in the field. Father, we know we are living in the time of the latter rain. We know that there's very little time left, according to all the things that are going on around us, Father. And I'm asking that you would pour out upon us the early and the latter rain, that we would experience the baptism of your Holy Spirit, that we would enter into an experimental connection with you, that having acknowledged that we don't know you as we ought. We have not been filled with the, up with all the fullness of God. We have not been, been raised up to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ yet. Lord, we desire more. So, Father, I ask that you would plant in our hearts that hungering and thirsting, that we would thirst after you. Like the deer that pants for the water brook, so mm -hmm. our soul pants for you, O oh Lord. Father, I'm asking that you would overwhelm our stubbornness and our pride and our 
and our independent spirit and our and our uh, wayward willful will that wants to do our own thing and to seek our own pleasure and indulge our own self lord i ask that you would take possession of us that you would take control of all these things we would trust you instead of trusting in our flesh father we recognize that as hard as we've tried we have not attained to righteousness because we have not attained to accept and receive the righteousness which is by faith for we are not ashamed of the gospel for in it the power of god is revealed from faith to faith father i'm asking that the the righteousness your righteousness would be revealed and that our own self-righteousness would be laid in the dust that we would acknowledge that we have failed at, at attaining to righteousness and that we would take hold of the righteousness of Christ, that we would embrace him, that he would, not that he would cover us and in our sins with his robe of righteousness, but that we would take off the robes of our self-righteousness and would put on the righteousness of Christ. Mm -hmm. Lord, we're asking that by the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would breathe life into us. I'm asking that the spirit of, of prayer and the spirit of grace lord you said in spirit of prophecy says the time has come for a thorough reformation to take place when this reformation begins the spirit of prayer will actuate every believer and will banish from the church the spirit of discord and strife father i'm asking that you would do that that pour out upon us that spirit of revival that will banish from us the spirit of discord and strife in our churches Lord, I'm asking that a spirit of revival would come over each person who is, li uh, who is listening. I'm asking that you would awaken them in the morning. Father, yes. just send your angel to stir them to alertness. Father, overwhelm their sleepiness, overwhelm their indulgence in sleep. And I ask that they would be quickened, that their ear would be opened, that they would uh, be awakened morning by morning and their as the ear of the learned as jesus was father i'm asking that you would do this to glorify your name not to make us look righteous but to show how good you are mm -hmm. how gracious you are how much you desire to transform us and make us into your image to make us partakers of your divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust these things we pray in jesus name amen Amen. Lord, as we pause a little longer, we just want to present um, our request to you. But Lord, we just want to acknowledge how wonderful you are, how great and marvelous are your works. Lord, when we go out into nature, we see the trees, we see the rivers, we see the birds, we see the flowers, and we know that there is indeed a great creator that is interested in the, even the small affairs of life. Lord, your word tells us that even the airs on our head are numbered. Lord, why should we worry, Lord? If you care for the sparrow and the lilies of the field, how much do you care for the, the people that your hand have created? Lord, we praise you for your faithfulness, which is new every morning. We praise you for your grace that you give so freely, which is sufficient for us, Lord. Um, Lord, as we come to present uh, this request, Lord, as I request, Lord, I'm just asking for you, O oh God, to just... Give us that spirit of prayer, Lord. Lord, so many people have been praying, Lord, but it seems as if their prayers just reach the roof and it falls down. Nothing is happening, Lord. And sometimes they wonder why. Lord, I pray that you will touch those hearts to see that maybe they might be harboring unforgiveness in their lives. Lord, help them, O oh God, to just reach out and to touch the M of your garment so that they can be made whole, so that they, be, they can be cleansed, so that they can receive your spirit, which brings life and vigor and health and strength that renews a dead person and gives life unto the soul. So that, Lord, they will lift up their hands and say, here I am, Lord, please wash me and cleanse me. And Lord, as you do that and as you put your robe of righteousness, Lord, when they utter their prayers, Lord, it will ascend up onto the throne of God as a sweet-smelling Savior. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings from your hands. Lord, we know they're sick amongst us, Lord. They're 
uh, those who have lost family members during this pandemic. There are those who have lost their jobs. Lord, they're worried, they're anxious. But Lord, teach them that even though they can't see or make a way, that they can pray. And to every sincere prayer, Lord, an answer will come. I pray that you will help us, Lord, to put our faith in the place where that, God, we believe with all our heart that you will hear us and that you are ready to help us. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins. Cleanse us by your power and help us not to hold, uh, not to take our hand out of your hand, but to hold firmly onto your hand as you lead us along, our great shepherd and the Jehovah Jireh. Just as you provided for the disciples of old, Lord, you are willing and more than willing to, um, to, to provide the needs of these your needed of us your needed children bless us to this end lord as we um look to you for all our necessities lord because you are the sustainer of life on this earth in jesus precious name we pray amen amen oh, praise the lord yes i do believe that there are many people who you know seek this you know is like why my prayers are not answered like i've been praying for three days <laughs> and then you know there you know the lord might be saying it's not enough you probably need to pray <laughs> for three years so sometimes you are thinking that you know i've prayed enough but god is saying it's not enough you know keep pressing your petitions and we're encouraging you if you're you know you're watching this program if you've been praying about something for three days you know, continue to press your petitions to the throne. You know, we've looked on previous uh, episodes, you know, on, you know, why it's necessary to repeat sometimes your prayers. It doesn't mean that you don't have faith, but it also keeps us in a, uh, a, a frame or a, a mindset of just, you know, having Jesus near to us as we are, pr you know, praying we're keeping the, the needs that we have. And, you know, I like what Elder David uh, pointed out in today's episode is that never forget to praise God and to give him thanks uh, when your prayers are answered. And I think we're going to look at that in our next episode. So just a <laughs> sneak preview of next week. Let's be talking about answered prayer. Elder David, are there any last thoughts that you want to share? Um, yes. One thing. One thing I've noticed, especially when you're being tested and frustrated and things are not going the way you wanted, start thanking God for your trials. Mm -hmm. He does not allow anything to come to you that is not for your best good. Mm -hmm. Do you trust him? Is he trustworthy? Mm -hmm. Say yes. If he's trustworthy, then he allowed that to come so that you will learn to rely on him. Amen. One thing I've noticed, I remember I, somebody texted me, uh, well, it was my wife that texted me something. Mm -hmm. and, and it was uh, about financial stuff. And I, it was, that was like my trigger. And it was like this darkness just came over me. And it was like, ah, oh, just frustrating. And I go, no, that's not of God. It wasn't her. It was the attack. It was, it was my weakness. It was my trigger that the enemy, it, nothing wrong with what she did. It was me, something in me that was triggered, right? Mm -hmm. And the enemy was using it just to, so I said, no, I'm not going there. I began, I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that test. Thank you for sending that to me. I give that to you and I thank you for sending it. And immediately, as soon as I started thanking him for that trial, the presence of Jesus came in and I, it just wrote, raised me right above that whole thing that was so mm -hmm. emotionally just had me in knots. Mm -hmm. And um, he is just so good like that. So if you're going through a struggle, start thanking him for the tr struggle and say, what is the lesson that I need to learn while I'm in the struggle? Mm -hmm. They always come to us for a reason. And once you understand the reason and you ex learn the lesson, then you can move along. It's amazing how things change when you just mm -hmm. cooperate with God, knowing that he sent it for a reason, cooperate with him, learn the lesson, and praise him for the victory even before you see it. Amen. That is faith. <laughs>
Mm. Well, I, I would like to leave with you guys. Um, James 1, you can write the scripture down. James chapter 1 and verse, verses 2 and 4. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at patience verse 4 but let patience have a perfect work that he may be perfect and entire wanting wanting nothing so you know we're talking about um trials it says count it all joy and you know trials have their place you know just as gold when you find it out in the in the mountain you know, the blacksmith has to put that gold through fire to cleanse and to purify it, purify us. So let us not forget that when we go through trials, it's God's way of cleansing us and purifying us and making us more into that beautiful flower that is like him. He wants us in his image. Perfect. <laughs> Praise God. You know, so be perfect as your heavenly father is. So if you want to be perfect, trials are a part of life so let us be joyful and let's ask god to you know teach us how to be patient you know and to be joyful let us pray father in heaven we thank you so much for today's um today's episode which you know speaks to us about um the reasons that we need to pray lord sometimes we have the wrong reasons the wrong motives for praying but lord as you teach us to pray for wisdom to pray for a spirit or revival to pray for reformation to pray for you know just your holy spirit being poured out in us so that we can uh, learn to go through our trials and our difficulties with joy and with patience lord we pray for our families we pray for uh, those affected by the pandemic we pray for those at the forefront that you protect them lord we pray for children even at this time that you will help parents oh god to utilize the time wisely you know every minute counts and lord i pray that you You'll help us to use this time as a means of drawing closer to you, witnessing for you, being ready, because we know that we should be building an ark, because we know that the crisis is coming and we need to, um, to have a safe place to run into, Lord. Help us to lift up the standard high, O oh God, and to let the King of glory come in. Father, help us to put aside that which does not uh, satisfy, that which is not righteous, Lord, and let Jesus reign on the throne of our, our lives. I pray that you will let us put aside self selfish desires and uh, help us, oh God, to love one another, our neighbors, or families. Just, you know, show that compassion, Lord, that the Samaritan had, oh God. You know, help us not to be like the Jew or the Levite, oh God, but help us to be filled with, you know, the, with the love of Jesus for others. We thank you and we praise you for everything that you're doing. And please remember those who have been praying for a long time and it seems that there are no answer to their prayer. Help them to be patient, Lord. Help them to continue to trust in you and to remember that, you know, Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine art and lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct their path. I pray that that would be the prayer of their hearts as they wait patiently for you. Thank you, Lord, for every prayer, for every blessing, for everything you've done for us. And we praise you to this end because we know that you inhabit the praises of your people. Help us to be more um to give thanks more help us to have that spirit of gratitude oh god every day in jesus precious and holy name we pray amen. amen praise the lord and we've come to the end of another yet exciting episode so we look forward to seeing you next week god bless you